Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to create a concept model of an air humidifier with Shaper 3D based on a 3D photogrammetry scan. In this video I will primarily explain the process I used to create sketches and geometry to then quickly generate a concept model. As you can see everything is already inside the Shaper file for you to take a look at to study and learn from. Great now let's get started. The first step I needed to do in this process was to bring in the STL model. I needed to scale it, rotate it, and then position it nicely centered. Because this object from the front as well as from the top, you can see is very symmetrical, it was a good giveaway that this can be created via a sketch and then the revolve command. And to make sketching and everything quite easy, I simply from the front and from the top positioned this object perfectly centered. Because the scan is just gray, it can be difficult to see all the fine details. And maybe also some scan areas are not very well captured. For example, the air vents here at the bottom. And to help here, I brought in two reference photos from the back and the front. And this, for example, helps really a lot when analyzing the scan in conjunction with the photos to fully understand how we have to model something. And there you can perfectly see how the air vents are kind of a little bit mushy and here in the photo this is captured really really well. This trick about placing two reference photos into the scene works actually really well and one tip is to place them very closely next to each other. So then this way when we rotate around they're not really blocking your view that much. But this way I can go to the front view, see the scan, including the image, or I go to the back area, and then there I can see the scan and the image. Very good. I already started with mentioning that this object looks very symmetrical, which is why I centered it perfectly inside the scene. And now we can take a look at the sketches and how I created the sketches. One tip again for the sketches is try to make sketches as simplistic as they are. Don't waste time. Don't be a perfectionist. Do only the minimal work and then try to do the rest via solid modeling. So here are all the sketches I only needed to create this model. So you see a lot of details aren't there. There's only one toe because I noticed, well, they're, they're more like copy and paste. For the eyes, I have this actually left and right because there I needed to uh, have both sketches because what I started to do was try to pre-plan. So how can I later actually model everything? And that is something before I created the sketches. So I knew that this object will be a revolve object. Okay, that makes sense. So I just create myself a sketch for the main body so I could revolve it. But it looked also that the head is pretty much kind of like the main body, but just an offset. Okay, that means I don't have to make a new sketch. I can simply make a revolve object of the main body, make a copy and then offset it. And then I have to trim and slice everything. So this is why here you have this line because it helps actually with the splitting of the object later. The eyes, for example, when I looked at the scan, there you could clearly see they seem to emerge from the surface. Okay, so um, that pretty much gave me the idea that I might have to project something onto the surface so I can slice the surface faces and then extrude it away from it. That's the reason why I have on each side a sketch. To work here symmetrical, all I did was also as a little tip, I just created one sketch and then I went to mirror, selected the correct plane and just made a copy for it. This idea via using the mirror command to make a copy, I even used up here. So I just went to mirror, selected this line, or spline actually, 
selected the plane or the grid and made a copy for it. So again, this way you can kind of like cut your work down into 50%. Let's take a look also at the dial. From the side, you can see that the dial is a little bit rotated. So how did I create this? I did a measurement in real life, and the measurement told me that this circle is actually, or the dial is for centimeters in diameter. Okay, so that meant let's create at the center by using the grid a circle with a radius of two centimeters. Very good. Now this circle, as you can see, is right at the standard grid. This is not where I need it to be. So we go to transform, move and rotate, and then simply move it up, go to a side view, bring it over. And then I try to get really close, ideally trying to put the, the center point of my object onto the mesh and then rotate it. And I try to rotate it so that it looks like the circle is kind of like perpendicular to this curve or surface. So I did not create any construction planes or something. I created flat sketches on the grid and then I simply moved the sketches into the position. And that is also how I created and then rotated and moved the circles for the eyes into that position or for example for the nose. For the nose I look at the side can this maybe be done via an ellipse from the front should this maybe be done via a rectangle and rounded edges that's an extruded and with beveled. So there was a little bit of trying to understand and predicting or guessing how could I model something. Also here for the ears we can see there is something cut away. So I have a sketch to revolve the ear like this. And then I have a rectangle that I can use to cut. This then can be deleted. And when I compare this now with the scan, uh, there I can see that the surface needs to be rotated. Okay, so this I can bring over a little bit, select the surface, go to move and rotate, use the correct rotation arrow. And then simply rotate it very gentle there. So also there you see just two sketches and I do a lot via direct modeling. For the back area, you see here, I have the element to cut the air vents. And then here I have an arc that will define this back detail, which we can see here. And I did not capture the bottom part of this air humidifier because it's standing on it, but this object is extruded a little bit above the center part. And then However, everything goes down. And here we can do the same thing. We simply extrude a basic sketch and then select the face, go to move and move everything down as far as we need. I hope you start seeing how I try not necessarily to cut corners, but simply make myself work a lot, a lot easier. There's no point in trying to work hard when you can work smart. Okay, very good. So let's take a look at this folder. This basically shows you how everything was created. Here we also have the toes. The toes were all created via the loft command. And then I did a copy and paste to just move all the toes into the correct position. So one left, one right. And then I selected all three and made a copy to the other side. You also can see I already have the head here included, which I can show you how I modeled this. So I simply made a revolve object there. And I can hide this because this would be my body. Then I make one more revolve. 
this is actually not for the head. This has to be a little bit bigger. And I simply offset the surface 0 0.7, 0 0.6 millimeter. So I get kind of like a surface that somewhat tries to look similar to the scan object I have. And then I need to figure out how do I slice this? And I have actually two curves here, one here and one here, just to show you how I try to figure out, does this work from here or will this better work from there? So let me show you how I came to that solution. I can select this, make this 10 and go to here and say this is 20. Very good. Here is body 22. That is actually the head. 21, that is the main body. So let's delete this. So it does not confuse us. And from body 22, I would like to remove body 23. And actually not remove. I want the intersected volume. There we are. Okay. So it looks actually not bad. But let's see how this compares to the scan. And it does not really look like the scan. Okay, now we can clearly see that this edge is more linear and then actually it's uh, convex at the bottom, but it should be more concave on the sides. So from the side, we cannot do this cut. So this was a good first initial idea, but this body is incorrect. So that is then why I created the sketch. So here I will do the same. 11, let's say, and this is 22. Very good. This is half a model. So double tap, more mirror, mirror along its own face. Double tap each one, union, make one body. And then we do the same, U and U, double tap. And we select intersect. Yeah, and this looks much better. So from here, we have this convex shape. Very good. And from the side, we also have this convex shape. Okay, so we figured out actually from what direction we have to model this. I included these two sketches also simply again to show you that even with years of modeling experience, sometimes I have a hunch or an idea how something could be built. That does not necessarily always mean that it's going to work out that way. Because all these sketches at one point might start also to be on one layer and then uh, confuse or not confuse, uh, it might get too complicated. What I sometimes do um, is separate them from each other. So you see, for example, here I have this arc. So this was first drawn actually on the front and then I moved the sketch further away. And we can do this very easy simply by I'm going to sketch simply a circle more down here. We add something to the sketch on that plane. And then later we can select this element, go to the move command and move it further away. And this will, as you can see, then also create a new sketch object for you. I found this process actually to be very useful when I have to very quickly separate um, sketches so they're easier to work on um, or I want to be able to show and hide them instead of having everything on one plane just move them around that's kind of like the really nice way how shape here also deals with sketches they are the sketches are flat but we can easily move rotate them in 3d space that's pretty genius it might look like a mundane feature but it is seriously very very useful because Let's say here for this eye, I can select it with the pencil and with the finger double tap, and then shape it will look perpendicular onto that sketch. So also then the, for technical sketching, this is just, is a dream to work with. Okay, enough of that raving. Let's go back to all the raw objects. So we are extrude, revolve, the Boolean intersect, loft. I created all the basic objects. And this is also a very common process I use. I block out the details first before I really go into 
um, finer modeling because what I want to prevent is that I spend time on a detail and then I realize later I made a mistake and I have to undo a lot of steps. It's better to break a bigger problem down into smaller modules and then step by step work yourself towards it. So with all this done, I can select a folder and turn on make a copy. And I make a copy to here. I also try to move those in even numbers. So when I have to move this later back to that position for the eyes, because I'm not going to move my sketches, I know it's just 40 centimeters to the right. And when you select a folder, you make a copy of that folder, including all the objects inside. Huh? How cool is that? Okay, so let's take a look at how we can very quickly generate everything. Again, what we try to do is make a model that is a concept. For example, in an industrial design process, that is then something I would give an engineer who then can take this and then figure out, well, how do we have to generate everything for mass production, for injection molding? The ears, for example, in this design are not part of the hat. They are an individual element, but we will simply model them so they are like part of it. Okay, so let's go to here and I start hiding everything I don't want to see. So there is my, uh, my two objects. Here I will extend this a little bit. You can also see here I did this extrusion and then I actually moved an edge to create this surface to be slightly at an angle. It is also, this bottom part is extruded a little bit longer. Very good. So now I can go ahead and say double tap, double tap, and subtract. Very good. Double tap, double tap, and subtract. Very good. So there now I have my two ears. Let's take a look at the hat. That is uh, quite good. I need to, or I want to maybe shell this design later. I could actually go ahead and do the shelling or because I have also this main body, I can simply later use the body to remove itself from it. Shelling is a very powerful tool, but shelling can be a little problematic when the geometry gets very complicated. While shelling looks rather simple, it is actually math-wise a very tricky task. So we will solve this problem differently. Here, we will join the two ears with the head. Very good. And thanks to Shaper's very nice direct modeling. Now we can add some details like edge roundings in there. Very good. Now yeah, this looks nice. So we have our nose here. For the nose, I would like this lower edge here to be rounded. So it's actually inside the nose. Yeah, I like this. Very good. Then all this we join. And actually our head pretty much now is done. Now I can go to the body, select my head, select my body, and then say subtract. I obviously want to keep my, my main body, so keep original. I will say here the remove bodies. Click done. And there you see, there we have our shelled object. Pretty cool. Maybe one last tiny detail, this edge we can give a tiny edge rounding. Cool. We don't have a sketch here for cutting the opening into the hand. And this sketch is actually here and there. So once some of this basic modeling is done, we can move it over and then bring it back. Or we can also do it this way. Since we know, so we move this over 40. Let's go 40 back. There we are. Select this opening here cut and clean this up a little bit there then select everything and we bring this back exactly to 40. You also see how I'm using the grid snapping basically all the time it is a huge um, helper this way I know everything lines up perfectly. Very good okay so actually the head looks pretty nice then Let's go ahead. What can we do with the body? So here's my body. And I I have like multiple tasks to do. I also want to create the bottom part and I want to create um, a top part. 
Now, because you remember, here, this one has a translucent water container and there's a separation edge. So let's see, how can we do this? I could select this and then extrude this one over and split this body into the top part. But then you see everything else actually gets removed. So that is not good. What we will do is we will hide the feet and also the other cat elements. Good. And then here, this one we bring over and intersect, go to here. Yeah, well, there's no option to say keep actually the, the other object. So what we will do is, okay, we make a copy. Two centimeter up, two centimeter down, hide this one. Good. So then this one here we cut because this is actually our top. And then one more time. And then we switch this to intersect. That's the bottom. Cool. This top one is actually more or less done. The head fits right onto it. And let's take a look at how or what we can do with the rest. So first, maybe this edge, let's round this 0.5. Okay, then from this object, I would like this to be removed. In this case here, don't keep it, just remove it. There we are. Let's round this. 0.25, very good. And I have the air vent. So to help my uh, design team to make this model look a little bit more professional, I can cut out of this object, this part. Okay, now we see the cuts, but when we rotate, we can see this is actually a solid model. That's not necessarily what I want. So what I will do now is I will select the whole object and then select shell and say shell is by two millimeters. Okay. And from this object, very good. Cut this one out. As you see, that looks actually nicer. Cool. Okay. We have the feet here. So the feet are a little bit wonky. Not a big deal. And we are, we skipped kind of like the step of working with the feet and then cleaning them up and then actually doing the lower body. I did this on purpose just to show you how we can alternate, sometimes have to alternate our modeling process. So I will hide this. This all actually I might have to extend a little bit. I just saw that when I want to use the lower body to trim off the feet, this has to extend a little bit and here, there we will round this 0.1, here too. Okay, and is this the lower body? Let's see, yes it is. Okay, so from this body, I would like this one to be removed. So subtract, and we want to keep the removed body, or not the removed, the tool basically. So this is my piece of foam and this is my knife. I would like to keep my knife body. And there you see, it's actually not really a big deal. This object perfectly separated actually the two feet into just four objects. Just remove what we don't need. Because now we could talk with the design team and say, well, these feet are actually individually made and they will be somewhat via snap mechanism or screw attached to it and to satisfy marketing yes of course we will shell those very thin so we can shave off a little bit of plastic material for those who are not familiar with industrial design and um, management um, aspect of it sometimes you can fight over two three cents of plastic this might sound ridiculous, but if you're producing a product in the thousands or the millions, this actually will end, add up in terms of cost you could save. Okay, so actually most of the model is done. So now we can clean everything up a little bit. Here is our folder. We move everything back because I still have to do the ears and the interface. The interface will be very easy. I select here the two rings select a surface and then say 
project. And Shapier automatically will understand that what I am going to do is not project the sketch onto the surface, but actually use the sketch to slice the faces of the surface. The reason why I did this is afterwards, we can give this different colors or give each edge uh, or uh, not each edge can select a surface and extrude it out a little bit. Let's say here we just very gentle move this one up. Actually, I moved this up. I meant extrude this one up and point zero 0.01. So, for example, I make it very, very small. Then we could round these edges. Because this process is what I will use for the eyes. So, check this out. So, I project actually the circle onto the eye. I mean, sorry, I project the eye circle onto the head. One more time. There we are. And then these two areas I can extrude upwards a little bit there. And then the resulting edges I can round. Because I extrude this point one, I can give this a point one fillet. And from the side there, you can see how nicely actually the eye is stone. It's not flat because it captures pretty much the shape of the head. I see beautiful. Maybe a few more details we can do. So here, maybe select this point one. There we are. And then select this edge here. Also point one there. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So the last step now is colorize it. This is now the point then when I think color in Shapier really comes in very useful because we can make objects much easier to read. So go to tools, color. We will start with the feet. Don't work with black. Make something rather really dark. Double tap, double tap. The nose, tap, 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 tap. Don't double tap because then you color the whole object. The eyes. I don't have the ears. Uh, split as I need to, to recreate the photo. But I will just select these surfaces here to indicate there's a color change. Very good. Oh, I noticed there's also something for the hat I still have to do. So here's another sketch. So these two sketches projected onto the hat. There, very good. And let's go back to color. And we make all this white. There we are. The bottom is actually a little bit brighter. So I can simply let me select this gray, double tap, then it selects the whole body. And here, double tap, adjust the color a little bit and play with the opacity. Very good. Click OK. And there we have now our object nicely colorized. And you see, this looks so much nicer to, uh, to look at. It's so much easier for your eyes to read and also to talk about with somebody. And this is pretty much the process I used to scan in an object, then create all the sketches based on the scan feature I was able to identify, make a basic um, CAD model, and then do the actual 3D modeling and refine everything. In this quick edition, I would like to show one very interesting technique how on a flat surface of just a projected edge onto it, we can create a groove right where we have these rings. And the process is actually pretty simple. We select a filling, we extrude this one up here. So point one, that's actually important to keep in mind. Then I can select this edge, round it, 0 0.02, very good. And this face now, I have to move back, minus 0.1. So I move it back. And look at that. We have a groove. How cool is that? Now I can go ahead and select this. We do exactly the same. One more time. 
extruded out by one. And then we select both edges here, point zero 0.02. Select this face one more time, minus point 0.1. So we move it back. Oh, we extrude it back kind of there. And then the, the last edge here, point zero 0.02. And there we are. So this actually makes it look even more realistic because besides just an edge projected onto the surface, we actually have actual fillets on the surface. Much better indicating that there is some sort of an interface, like a button to press, rotate, or something like that.